G'day guys, I've had a request for this calculus exam question um, that says for the function f of x equals x squared plus 2, 3 minus x, use show the use of the product rule to determine f dash of x and simplify your answer. Okay, well, what we're going to do first is to make sure we get all our three marks here, we have to obviously show the use of the product rule. Now the product rule is if we've got this uh, function that's defined as y equals like two functions multiplied together, the derivative of it, y prime, is going to be equal to, we do the derivative of the first one, we leave the second one as it is, then we're going to add the derivative of the second one and leave the first one as it is. So that's our product rule. We've got to show that we've used that method to solve it because you could multiply out the brackets and then just do a straight derivative, but this question is saying product rule, so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so we've got like our UV style set up here where we, we could call this U, we could call this V. So our derivative of this function, or F dash X, it's always good to use the notation of the question, is going to be equal to the derivative of the front, which is just 2X, times the back, 3 minus X plus the derivative of the back, which is just going to be negative 1, times the front left the same. Cool. So it also asks us to simplify our answer. If it didn't say simplify, I would just leave it here, because what's the point? This is a correct derivative, um, but because it said simplify, we're going to have to do a little bit of, you know, massaging, so to speak, on this problem. So first of all, I'm going to multiply out all my brackets. So I've got here, I'm going to multiply into this first bracket, 2x two, two times 3 is 6x, two 2x two times negative x is negative 2x squared. Then I've got minus 1 times x squared is just minus x squared minus 2. We're going to join all our like terms here, and this is going to be equal to negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Cool, so that's going to be our derivative, f dash of x. Cool, now what does it say for part 2? Determine the coordinates of the point slash points on the curve where the gradient is 1. All right. So what we're looking for, go back to the original colour, we're looking for where f dash of x equals 1. Great. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down our f dash of x. We have negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 2 equals 1. Great. So I'm not a huge fan of these negative coefficients out the front of, especially out the front of our highest power term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all of the points, all of these, um, like the x squareds, the x's, and the negative 2, and I'm just going to move them over that side. So what I'm going to have left on this side is obviously 0 equals. So it's going to be 3x, because we're just going to change the sign on all of this, minus 6x plus, now plus 2 onto 1 is a 3. So we need to solve this equation here. We can hopefully, you guys understand a little bit about quadratic factorization. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to, first of all, factorize the entire thing by 3. 0 equals 3 bracket, x squared minus 2x plus 1. I can then just literally divide both sides by 3. It's one of the beauties of having equals to 0. Because I can divide both sides by 3, can't get rid of those 3s, and this 0 divided by 3 is still 0, so I'm still left with 0 equals x squared minus a 2x plus 1. So what I'm going to do then is just give myself some space. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, factorize this so I can use what's called the null factor law. So, I'm looking for two numbers that add together to give negative 2 and multiply together to give positive 1. It's relatively easy, it's just two negative 1s. So, we have x minus 1 
an x minus 1, and that equals 0. So what we can say is by the null factor law, this isn't National Football League, it's null factor law, x will just equal, there's only one point on this graph because it's just negative 1, negative 1, so x is going to equal 1. So a lot of kids, I've, when I mark tests or um, teach kids and I get them to do questions like this, they always, a lot of them will leave it like this. Now, you're going to lose a mark for that. You can't be that stupid. You've got to see on the question that it says the coordinates of the point. This isn't, this isn't rocket science to read the question correctly. So what we need to do, we've got the x equals 1. All we have to do is find out what y equals. If it says coordinates, figure out what y is. If in doubt, just work it out. It'll take 10 seconds. Like So what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute 1 into the original equation. So we're just going to find f of 1. And that's equal to 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. 3 times 2 is a sucks. So the coordinates of the point, therefore, f dash of x equals 1 at 1 comma 6. Not rocket science, guys. All we have to do is just make sure we substitute our x equals 1. So once we've done all this heavy lifting here, just put it back into the original equation and figure it out. It's nice for this question how they've given us a nice easy number like x equals 1. But like sometimes they might give you a, a fraction or some kind of weird number which might take a little bit of extra time. But this time was nice to us. So let's just quickly go through what we've done. So back to the top. It told us to show use of the product rule to determine f dash of x. Now, to, to show use of the product rule, it might be wise if you actually write the product rule down in the margins so the teacher knows that you understand what the hell the product rule is. Once you've got this written down, this we're going to use this to guide us. I then found my u and my v. Again, I'm just trying to demonstrate to the marker. When I'm doing stuff like this, I'm trying to demonstrate to the marker that I grasp the product rule. Like... You have to provide the marker with clues that you know what the hell you're doing. You're not just fluffing through the maths. So if I'm putting a U and a V here, and then you can see where the U and the V corresponds into my solution, you can see the use of the product rule. So the marker, I'm basically giving him no choice but to give me all the marks. So what it asked us to also do is simplify our answer. So then we just combined our like terms and put it in as a, just a uh, non-monic quadratic equation. We went on to question poll part two of this question. So we got our three marks, happy days, one, a two, a three. We went on to part two of this question and it asked us for the coordinates. Now, I can't stress that enough. Coordinates are the points on the curve where the gradient is one. So we defined what we're looking for. We're looking for when f dash of x is one. Now, if you like stuff up the rest of the question, if you've got a nice marker, you might even get a mark for just writing this down because you've demonstrated what the hell you're looking for. So what I did then is I substituted my derivative in. I made it equal to 1. Now, I did a bit of person, used to put a personal preference here, and I moved all of the numbers over towards the 1 to get the 0 on the left. The only reason I did that is so I could have a positive number on the highest um, power, well, the coefficient of the highest power, say. Now, I moved everything to the right so I could have this quadratic here. I then spent the rest of the time trying to factorize this quadratic. So I took a common factor of 3 out, and then I just um, did a bit of monic quadratic differentia uh, differentia factorization and got to here. And then by the NFL, or null factor law, not the National Football League, as I said earlier, x has to equal 1 to make this thing work. So once we did that, we made, we've probably got two marks to there. For the third mark, we need the y point. So we substitute 1 back into the original equation, which is up here, and we come out with 6. Once we've done all that, we just write to the markers. This is what our solution is. f dash of x equals 1 at the coordinate point 1, 6. Happy days. So, guys, you know, I went through it pretty fast, but I don't think this is a relatively um, 
complex problem. And if you're looking at it, you probably, if you're looking at this video, you probably just want a quick run through of how you would solve a problem like this. So, you know, I would suggest if you're having trouble with like the actual calculus or a few of the steps, I've got a lot of videos where I break these things down, but here I'm just trying to demonstrate how you would approach this in an exam sort of situation. So I hope this video helped guys and I'll um, see you again next time. If you need any help, make sure you send me a message and I'll be more than happy to give it my best shot in solving the problems that you have. But if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and again, I'll see you next time.